do you have to speak in tongues to be filled with the Spirit? Now, I grew up as a Pentecostal, and I'm still a Pentecostal. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that it is a separate experience from water baptism. Clearly, they have to be. Water is water baptism. Baptism of the Spirit is something else. And water baptism, of course, is God's means to wash our sins away, cause us to be born again. So the baptism of the Spirit comes after we're saved. So I believe in the second experience of the baptism of the Spirit. And if you disagree, uh, I don't really understand what Bible you're reading, to tell you the truth. Because it is quite clear in the book of Acts that the baptism of the Spirit does come after we get saved. Yet, I'm not here to answer that question. I'm here to answer the question, do you have to speak in tongues to be saved? Now, when I grew up, I was told that speaking in tongues is always the initial evidence of the baptism of the Spirit, that there is no other gift except tongues. Well, I'll be honest with you, I always had trouble with that, even though I would parrot it. In the early part of my ministry, I would teach that. But there was one particular verse that I knew was just opposed to this idea. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul writes, now watch this, verse 30, do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? So he's asking a rhetorical question, and the answer to every question is no. So when he says, do all speak in tongues, the answer is absolutely not. So if you've been told that you have to speak in tongues to be filled with the Spirit, it's just not true. Paul lays it out that you do not have to. That's not a gift that's given to everybody. But you should have gifts of the Spirit. If it's prophecy, or if it's gifts to heal, or if it's or, or gifts of the word of wisdom and knowledge, there's going to be other gifts that will show evidence that the Holy Spirit has come. But more than the gifts, the fruits of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit hasn't just come to make us talk in tongues or heal the sick. He also wants to fill our hearts with love. As Paul writes in Romans 5, our, our hearts are filled with love by the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, pours out his love into our hearts. So we are to be filled with love and joy and peace. So one of the other evidences of the baptism of the Spirit is you have greater love, greater joy, greater peace than you had without the baptism of the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has many ways to, sh to, to empower you. One of those ways is the gift of tongues. And tongues is prominent in the book of Acts. However, it, doesn't, it is not the only gift that shows up when people are initially filled with the Spirit. Now, the first time, it is the gift of tongues. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And all of them did speak in tongues. And, and so there is, you know, this idea that if not all, most people should speak in tongues. What should prevent them? In fact, even Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 5, I would like every one of you to speak in tongues. So he is expressing a wish that I would like all of you to have this gift. But he doesn't end there. But I would rather have you prophesy. So Paul is saying the gift of prophecy is even better than tongues for the church. So I'd rather have you have that gift. So sometimes people have other gifts of the Spirit rather than tongues. Now, does that mean I'm discouraging you, you from seeking the gift of tongues? No, absolutely not. But what I am trying to do is for those who are Pentecostal, those who have had hands laid upon them to be filled with the Spirit, and if you haven't spoken in tongues, don't let the devil tell you, uh, God did not confer the gift of the Spirit to you because you don't have tongues. But let me ask you, ever since you've been prayed to be filled with the Spirit, have you seen a greater fruits in your life? Well, yeah, I've seen that. Well, that's already proof that God gave you the Holy Spirit when the body of elders laid hands on you or the bishop laid hands on you. So believe that you have the gift of tongues. And in the book of Acts, yes, tongues is the only gift is mentioned for the first time. But when you read the Bible, other gifts show up. Acts chapter 10, the Bible says that they spoke in tongues and praised God. They had a greater depth of praise in their heart. And that can only come from the Holy Spirit. So it wasn't just tongues, it was the depth of praise. And sometimes that's what people have, is they have such a love and a depth of praise that they never had until they got filled with the Spirit. Acts chapter 19, Paul lays hands on 12 disciples and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So as I started reading the book of Acts, tongues was not the only evidence, but there were other evidences that often did take place. And to me, any of the gifts of the Spirit whether it's the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the discerning of spirits, the gift of faith, the working of miracles, gifts of healings, prophecy, 
And of course, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, any of these gifts are sufficient evidence to show that God has poured out the Holy Spirit into your life.